Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Glitched Velocity. I'm your host Wazahat and today in this video, I'm gonna demonstrate my new shader action that allows us to use 2D spreadsheets in Copper Cube Game Engine. Of course, this is a paid extension, which means that you have to purchase it through itch.io in order to use it with Copper Cube Game Engine. Once you have purchased and installed it in your computer, now open up your Copper Cube editor. I have already deleted the default cube mesh and the default sky box and changed my background color to this. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna import some sprite sheets in my texture panel. As you can already see, I have these bunch of sprite sheets in my computer. So I'm gonna select them all and click open and they then they will be imported in my texture panel. Now I'm gonna create a plane mesh with tile count of 1, width of 32, length of 32. These properties can be changed according to your game or according to your preferences. But for this video demonstration, I'm gonna use 32 by 32. And then I will apply any of the sprite sheet texture to this plane mesh. So for this video demonstration, I'm gonna use this point sprite sheet and then I'm gonna change the material type from solid to transparent alpha channel and then I'm gonna apply a new behavior behavior triggered by events and then when a key is pressed to something behavior then I'm gonna change the key from A to F and then I'm gonna apply the shader action by going in new action scripted action and then search for sprite sheet animator And then we have some properties here. Affecting node is the node on which we are going to apply our shader or the node on which the sprite sheet texture is applied to. So select the plane mesh here because we have our sprite sheet texture applied to our plane mesh. Then we have affect all materials. Suppose if you have a model which has multiple materials, then you want to uncheck this and select the material index that you want to change or affected by the shader. But in our case, we want to affect all the materials. So leave it to checked and then leave this on default value because we want to change all the materials. Then we have base material type. For example, if you want your material or the texture to be solid, transparent or transparent add or something like that, then you can change it here. 13 is for transparent. Then we have columns and rows. and this depends highly on your sprite sheet type. For example, in this particular sprite sheet, we have one, two, three, four, five columns and one single row. But if I have selected this, this sprite sheet, then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve columns and one two three four five six seven eight rows so for this sprite sheet we have 12 columns and eight rows so let me just check now set this back to coin and then go to the sprite sheet animator shader and then we have to change these default settings here for columns and rows as we know we have five columns in this sprite sheet one two three four five and one single row so i'm gonna change this to one and column to five then we have animation time which is the animation speed or the time taken by the shader to animate first frame to second frame by default it is 10 and i'm gonna use the default value then we have start frame which is the first frame for the animation if you have set it one then it will be played from here for example if it if I, if I set it to 2 then the animation will start playing from this frame and so on so I'm gonna use 1 because we want to play the full animation cycle then we have the end frame which is the last animation frame of your sprite sheet so suppose if I change it to 3 then the animation will be played from 1 to 3 so because we have start frame 1 and end frame 3 then the animation will be from 1 to 3 and if I have it 5 then it will play the whole animation cycle from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 
So if I press Ctrl F10 now to test the application, and if I press F, this coin sprite sheet should be cropped and animated automatically according to our shader settings. If I press F now, then you can see the coin is now animated. You can also increase the animation speed by going into a sprite sheet editor or you can say sprite sheet animator and decrease this animation time to something like one then the animation speed will be really really faster so if i press ctrl f10 now and if i press the f key to change the animation or to apply or execute the shader action then we will notice that the animation speed will be super fast if i press f now then you will notice the coin is now revolving or rotating at much higher speed so the animation is really really faster let me just quickly use some another sprite here for example this sprite sheet here with 12 columns and 8 rows and let me just quickly change the settings in our shader so we have to change a bunch of options here like we want our columns to be 12 and rows to be at 8 because we know that we have our 12 columns and 8 rows in this particular spreadsheet and we want our animation time to 10 which is our default animation time and the start frame so we want our animation to start from here till here so from 4 to 6 which is front walk cycle for this particular character so if i go here in our spreadsheet animator and change the start frame to 4 and end frame to 6 and if it ok and then if i test the application and now if i press f to execute the shader then the shader will play the front cycle of the second character which has blue hairs and red dress if I press F now, then you'll see it will only play the front walk cycle of this character. Now, let's say we want to play the animation from 1 to 12, which is the front walk cycle for these four characters. So, if I go to spreadsheet animator here and change the first frame or the start frame to 1 and end frame to 12 and hit OK and press Ctrl F10. And if I press F now, then it will play all the animation from 1 to 12 frames, which is our front walk cycle for these four characters. Now, suppose I want to play mm, the side walk cycle, which is 13 to 15. So I'm going to change this. To 13 and end frame to 15. If I press Ctrl F10 now, and if I press F, then it will play the animation. And now I want to use the variables to change the animation speed during the gameplay. So I'm gonna attach a new behavior here. Behavior is triggered by event when a key is pressed, do something, and I'm gonna change my key to G and then we are going to use a new action which is set or change a variable and then we are going to use plane mesh plane mesh one dot animation time as the variable name plane mesh one is our scene node name here and animation time is our global variable for changing the time of uh, animation for this particular shader then we have to go to value and as we know we have the default value of 10 in our shader and we want it to uh, come faster so i'm gonna use a lower value here which for example 5 so that the character speed will increase so if i hit ok 
and test the application by pressing Ctrl F10 and then if I press F then the character is working with this animation speed and if I press G then the speed should increase so as you can see if I press G the animation speed has been increased so let me just quickly change it to something like 1 so that you can notice the speed change clearly so if I press F the character is working and now if I press G the animation speed will be super fast so as you can see as soon as I hit the G then the animation has picked up its speed so one more thing we have two more other variables for example we want to change the start frame or you can say the end frame so we have variables and text that will change a variable and then we are going to use plain mesh one dot start frame because we want our starting frame to be changed and right now we are using 13 as our start frame so I'm gonna change it to 1 and I'm also going to change our end frame so variable syntax set or change variable plain mesh 1 dot end frame and then I'm gonna change it to 12 or you can say 6 so that the animation will be played from 1 to 6 here so if I press ctrl F10 and if I press F then the animation will be the side way or walking left if I press F then the character is walking left and as soon as I hit G then the animation should change from 1 to 6 so this is how you can use these shader let me quickly just change it one more time so we are going to use this sprite sheet here which has 1 2 3 4 5 6 rows and single column and let me change my sprite sheet editor here so we have single column and six rows and we want our first frame to be one and last frame to be six so if i press ctrl f10 and if i press f then this is how our sprite should automatically animate and now comes the troubleshooting part only those sprite sheets will work with this shader which can be cropped through columns and rows method if you want to know what kind of spreadsheet should work then go to easygif.com sorry dot com easygif.com and then you can use the spreadsheet cutter here and load your spreadsheet for example i have this spreadsheet here <coughs> upload it and then we have this option cutting method of by number of columns and rows and we know that we have 12 columns and 8 rows and then if we cut it here then notice that all of these sprites should appear perfectly if your sprite sheet is not appearing as expected or if it is in wrong format or some sprites are cutting from the edges or they are not appearing appearing as good as you expect it to be then those sprites will not work because those sprites uses this by tile size method and my shader right now does not support that method so only the sprites which can be cut or cropped through this columns and rows method will work only so that's it that's all for today's video i hope this extension will help you in animating your characters 2d characters really fast and this will also increase the performance because it will decrease the render calls or the ccb load texture calls for the application so it will boost the performance of your game if you use this sprite shader instead of 
spreadsheets editor instead of using individual PNGs. And sorry, I'm baffling right now because I'm exhausted. My stamina is not that good. Uh, I'm recording continuously without any break or without any full stop. So I hope you like the video. If you like the video, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends, subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to purchase the extension from itch.io. I will provide the link in the description down below. You can also visit my website www.neophyte.cf and join the Discord. Hasta la vista.